Hi friends, my name is Natraz. In this video, I am going to talk about standard technical definition of Hibernate. Everyone knows it, Hibernate is a ORM software or ORM tool to develop objects based OR mapping persistence logic. Uh, if someone asks you what is Hibernate, first we will say framework. Again ask what is Hibernate, we will say ORM framework. Again someone asked you, what is Hibernate? You have to say, it is a ORM framework to develop what? Persistence logic. But someone is expecting from you the complete definition, standard technical definition. So that is what I am going to talk and uh, that is what I am going to explain as part of this particular video. The definition of Hibernate goes something like this. Hibernate is an open source, lightweight non-invasive, non-invasive Java ORM framework to develop objects based database software independent persistence logic in all kinds of Java, JWE and Java framework applications. So, let me put the same thing. What is this? Hibernate is an open source lightweight non-invasive Java ORM framework to develop objects based database software independent persistence logic in all Java, JWE, Java framework applications. So, let us talk about each word. First of all, let me talk about what is open source. Open source means not only free, it is what? Its source code is also visible to us or accessible to the developers or programmers. Java is open source. That means not only it is free, its source code is what? Visible to everyone. Hibernate is an open source. Not only it is free, source code is visible to us. When we install Hibernate by extracting zip file, you will get one folder, Hibernate home, that means where Hibernate for software is installed. In that one, you will get one folder called project folder. In that one, there is a folder called Hibernate iPhone core, Hibernate iPhone core folder. There you can see the source code of Hibernate. Due to this, we call it as what? Hibernate is what? An open source software. You may ask me question. How these uh, companies who are giving open source software will survive because they may get financial problems. Yes, I do agree that there will be bit financial problems, but when compared to the benefit that is coming to software community, uh, the, um, the financial burden they are getting is very, very less. So, they think in that particular context, that is why they do not bother much about financial issues. But somehow, they will try to compensate the losses, they will try to compensate the losses. So, by generating revenue in other angles. What are the other angles? By offering certification exams, you take Java, open source, but uh, there are certification exams, OCJP, SCJP, OC, WCD, this kind of exam, they are bit costly, they charge a lot. So, through that they will generate the revenue. By conducting uh, uh, trainings in uh, software companies, so, they come to companies, they conduct a training on latest technologies and various things. So, like that they will generate the revenue. Then by providing software services, in a software company while working with certain open source software, if you struck up somewhere in the middle, if you struck up somewhere in the middle, okay. So, this vendor company who created that software will come and uh, solve the problem that is nothing but they provide their services. So, through that also they will generate the revenue. So, overall open source softwares means not only free their source code will be exposed to us. Along with Hibernate software installation, we will get the source code that makes Hibernate as what? Open source framework that makes Hibernate as an what? Open source framework. Then lightweight. Hibernate is lightweight because of when we install the Hibernate framework, it comes in terms of MBs, not a bigger one. In terms of MBs, I think if you install the latest 5.x, uh, this one, you will get around 300 MB, not more than that. 
maximum 300, not more than that. So, this makes hibernate as what? Lightweight. To develop hibernate application and to execute hibernate code, there is no need of heavy weight web server, application server software. There is no need of heavy weight containers like Sarlet container and uh, JSP container. Just basic JDK software plus hibernate libraries, nothing but hibernate jar file. If you can arrange them, you can start happily start developing hibernate code, happily start executing hibernate code. That is another one. It supports POSO and uh, POSI model programming. POSO and what? POSI model programming. It is something like this. Ordinary class is called POSO class. Ordinary interface is called POSI. POSI means plain old Java interface. In another video, I talked elaborately about POSO and POSI. Whatever classes we develop as the resources of Hibernate application, as the resources of Hibernate application are ordinary classes and ordinary interfaces. They are not tightly coupled with Hibernate API. So, this uh, nothing but what? Support for POSO and POSI model programming. So, due to this our Hibernate is what? Lightweight. Next, we can use Hibernate alone or also we can use Hibernate along with what? other technologies and framework that are there in Java. So, it is not compulsory you should use with Spring, you should use with X, you should use with Y, you should use with Z. If you want you can use it alone independently or if you want you can work with, you can use it along with what? Other technologies and framework that are there in the market. So, this also makes Hibernate as what? Lightweight. So, let me revise why Hibernate is what? Lightweight. So, small size in the installation. Next, no need of heavy servers and containers for execution. For execution can be used alone or can be used with other Java technologies and frameworks can be used alone or can be used with other Java technologies and what framework. So, next what is the word we got in the definition of Hibernate? Non-invasive. What do you mean by non-invasive framework? First of all, let me talk about what is invasive. While working with any framework, we will develop some classes as part of project development. If those classes are forced to implement that framework API interfaces or that framework API uh, are forced to extend from framework API class, then it is called as what? Invasive framework. For example, I am developing one class as part of Hibernate framework based project development. That class is forced to implement Hibernate API interface or forced to extend from Hibernate API class, then definitely that class is called as a tightly coupled class with Hibernate framework. In that process, okay, we can call okay, that class is what? Invasive class and Hibernate is also called as what? Invasive framework. But in fact, in fact, Hibernate never pressurizes you like that. Whatever classes you develop in Hibernate based project development or application development, they are totally loosely coupled classes from what? Hibernate API. That means, you can develop that class without implementing Hibernate API interfaces. You can develop that class without extending from what? Hibernate API classes. Due to this, that class is what? Non-invasive and I can say Hibernate is also what? Non-invasive framework. So, Hibernate is non-invasive because the classes interfaces whatever you develop as part of Hibernate project development are totally loosely coupled from Hibernate API. That means, classes need not to implement Hibernate API interfaces and classes need not to 
extend from Ibernet API classes. If you develop any interfaces, these interfaces need not to extend from what? Ibernet API interfaces. So, this makes Ibernet as what? Non-invasive. Non-invasive framework is very, very interesting here. It actually gives challenges to the programmer. Come to me, write your logics by using ordinary class and ordinary interfaces. Tomorrow you do not like my framework. Go to another framework, take this, these classes and start using them what? In another framework. That means, it gives freedom to use what? Framework facilities without making the classes of the application into framework APIs. So, whenever you want, you can use those classes in X framework. To tomorrow, if you do not like you working with X framework, you can move to what? Y framework. Whatever classes we take in Hibernate to map with the tables, to make objects of classes pointing to what? DB table records. Luckily, all those classes are what? Ordinary class. And so, they, they do not have any tight coupling with what? Hibernate API. Because of that, I can say Hibernate framework is what? Non-invasive framework. Non-invasive framework. The classes of Hibernate application development or loosely coupled classes with respect to Hibernate API. That means classes need not to implement Hibernate API interfaces and need not to extend from Ibernet API Java ORM framework. It is a framework. Why? Because it provides abstraction layer on JDBC and simplifies persistence logic development. You know that technology means you have to write both common logic and specific logic and that leads to boilerplate code problem. What do you mean by boilerplate code problem? The code that repeats in what? Multiple applications either with no changes or with minor changes is called as what? Boilerplate code. That is a problem. While working with the JDBC, we have to write both common logic and specific logic. Only specific logic will change application to application. Common logic like a driver, registration of driver, creating statement, creating a, um, result set and closing connection, all these are what? Required in multiple application, they are required either as it is or with what? Minor changes in multiple application. Because of these common logics that are there in what? JDBC. So, uh, JDBC application gives boilerplate code problem. But using Hibernate, Okay. We get abstraction layer on JDBC. That means, Ibernet internally uses what? Uh, JDBC, but we never bother about it. So, and it minimizes what? Boilerplate code problem also. So, that is why we can call Hibernet is a framework. Framework is a special software that is built on the top of what? One or more technologies having environment to simplify application development. Yes, definitely Ibernet is built on the top of what? JDBC technology and other technologies and provides environment to develop what? Persistence logic in a simple way. That is why we call what? Hibernet is what? Framework. Why it is called ORM framework? It allows us to develop objects based persistence logic. Objects based persistence logic, such frameworks are called ORM framework. Even Hibernate is allowing us to develop what? Objects based persistence logic. That is why we call it as what? ORM framework. What framework here? ORM framework provides abstraction layer on JDBC and simplifies persistence logic development and simplifies persistence logic development. What is the another word we have? To develop objects based database software independent persistence logic. Let me talk about it. While working with Ibernet, we develop persistence logic. 
luckily this persistence logic we never write with SQL queries. In JDBC we write persistence logic using what? SQL queries. SQL queries are some extent database software dependent queries due to that their persistence logic is what? database software dependent. But in Hibernate, we do everything through objects and no SQL queries will be utilized. So, all these objects are what? Portable across the multiple database software. That means, if you move from one database software to another database software, we can continue same objects, we can continue with the same objects. That too, we are not using SQL queries. That is the reason we can say Hibernate persistence logic is not only object based, it is what? Database software independent or portable across the multiple database software. It is portable across the multiple database software. And one more beautiful concept of Hibernate is we are an object oriented programmer we get everything in the form of objects and we would like to use same objects in the persistence logic. Hibernate allows you for that. When it comes to JDBC, even though you get everything in the form of object, but in order to use them in persistence operation, especially for SQL queries, you have to convert object notation data into what? Simple text values. That problem is not there with Hibernate. You can work with objects directly in the persistence logic development. For example, I have a student object having student details. If I want to insert this object data into table as a record by using JDBC, I cannot use that object as it is in the SQL query because SQL query supports only simple values. You have to convert object notation data into multiple simple values and you have to in use those simple values in the insert query, then only we are able to insert the record in the table. When it comes to Hibernate, the good part is we can use that object as it is for persistence operation. That is a, this Hibernate internally uses JDBC code plus insert query, that is a different story. But overall, we can happily use what? Objects directly in the persistence operations. Due to this, programmer feels that even though database changes, nothing will change. These objects can be continued in other database software to develop the persistence logic. Next. We can even use Hibernate to develop the persistence logic either independently or you can even use this persistence logic in multiple Java application, multiple Java technology based application like Sarlet, JSP, ZB kind of environments or you can even, even use this persistence logic in framework based application development. That means, you can make struts application using Hibernate persistence logic to talk to database software. You can make Spring application using Hibernate persistence logic to talk to database software. So, that is the meaning of what? That persistence logic can be used in multiple applications to make them to talk with what? Database software. So, these are the various words related to what? Hibernate definition. Let me summarize them. Hibernate is open source because when we install Hibernate, not only it is a free software, its source code is given to us. Hibernate is lightweight. Size wise, it is lightweight. Heavyweight servers and containers are not required for core execution and it can be used independently and it can be used along with what? Other technologies and framework for persistence logic development. The classes what we develop in application development are what? Lightweight. Hibernate is what? Non-invasive. Whatever classes we develop, they are not tightly coupled with what? Hibernate API, especially the classes uh, that we are using to um, map to tables, to make objects representing table records, those classes are what? Not tightly coupled with Hibernate API. This makes Hibernate framework as what? Non-invasive. Since it provides abstraction layer on JDBC and simplifies persistence logic through objects, it is called as what? ORM framework because it allows to develop OR mapping persistence logic. So, these are the various words related to what Hibernate uh, uh, definition, standard definition. I hope you benefited with this video. Thank you.